that there might be what would be after flagellant parties. <laughs> the sight of the blood, the, the stripped down bodies and the sweat and the, 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 the lean muscular frames and all of that, no doubt aroused many young female peasant hearts. That and the fact that you just had so much emotion loose in that, at that moment in time. The church finally moves against them. In October 1349, Pope Clement VI issues a papal bull denouncing the flagellants and appeals to the kings of England and France. The church actually has to look to the political uh, means of stopping the flagellants. The flagellants begin to be a by military officials. Some masters, now called masters of errors, are even seized and beheaded. Wir befinden dich für schuldig. Du hast Unglauben verbreitet. Du bist zum Tode verurteilt. Soll Gott deine Seele schützen. Even with movement broken, much of Europe remains violently hostile to the remnants of Europe's Jewish community. The survivors become refugees, searching for a safe haven. In most of Europe, France, England, large parts, many German cities, had no Jews by the end of the 14th century. They'd expelled them or killed them. Uh, but in some places, Jews were being given greater protection by monarchs and invited to settle, and one of those places is Poland. In 1349, Poland is ruled by King Casimir the Great. The legends are that he fell in love with a Jewish woman called Esterka, Esther. And it was out of love for her that he issued this bull of protection to the Jews of Poland and invited more Jews into Poland. One of the ironies is it pushed the German Jewish community toward Poland. And 700 years later, that sort of came full circle again with the same group of Germans. In the winter of 1349, the plague pushes north to the Scandinavian peninsula. By the time it reaches Russia two years later, the crisis is over in France. After wiping out around half the population of Europe, the pandemic is fitfully receding. Infectious diseases have these natural cycles that they go through until that cycle is broken, either by human agency or by, for example, a change in virulence of the infective organism itself. As the Black Death proceeded and as the humans began to die, and uh, society, you know, that it was falling apart, basically, um, it's possible that the human numbers drop down below a certain level and if these outbreaks can't maintain themselves. <laughs> the magnitude of the final death toll is so vast that it strains the human imagination. I think the plague was um, unprecedented in the scope of its mortality and I'm of the opinion that the mortality was higher than most scholars are willing to accept. I believe that the average mortality was close to 50 percent, not a third or 30 percent as, as most scholars claim. Monasteries in particular have been devastated. 60 percent of Venice has been killed by the epidemic. In Avignon, half of the citizens are dead. At the monastery in Montpellier, where Guy de Choliac received his training, only seven of the 140 monks are left. England is thought to have lost nearly two million people, almost half its population. But Edward III, King of England, survives, as do most nobles who have taken shelter on secluded country estates. There's a somewhat lesser death rate among the upper classes, partly because they could um, move 